what's up, Tice? Travis. Hey. What's up? Oh man, and the robot. What's up, robot? So check this out. This is the Halter robot. It's a complete robotic automation cell. And it is an absolute game changer because now you can actually install robots on CNC machines in minutes and get them running, literally minutes. A lot of times when you see robots going to shops, you see like it takes weeks and months to install one of these cells. And then when you, when you see them, they're not running, you know? They have issues, they have different problems. And that's serious because there's a lot of money invested in that automation system. So when I saw the halter, I was like, man, I gotta I got get behind this because this is a game changer. A lot of our work is going to other countries and the work is automated in those other countries. So bring the robots here, let's automate the system when applicable and then increase manufacturing right here, bring the jobs back, make it all happen. Boom, so Travis, crazy system, right? Oh yeah, no, like I say, as you can see, we're not anywhere near the machine right now, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take this about four or 5,000 pound robot approximately, and we're gonna move it into place, and before you know it, it'll be up and picking parts. Yeah, super good, Tice. Now this is really cool because, you know, you're just getting started getting a robot or something. You can get one of these and put it on multiple machines and it's really easy to move around. So we've actually, uh, just in filming this, we've actually moved the robot in a couple times. So they brought it in, they positioned it, it took a few minutes, and then Travis just was like, hey, since I see that corner over there, I'm just gonna throw some tape on, just corner that out, and that'll help me position it from the backside. When you actually look underneath the halter robotic system, you can see this big old screw right there, a big old screw. And this thing doesn't change. It gets adjusted at the time that you set up the entire robot the first time at this machine. Now what's important is that at the bottom of this bolt, underneath it, there's a foot. And this basic foot or part is actually tapered inwards. So when you take the robot and you actually bring it over, you would position the robot, you position the robot over this pad. If you look at the top, you have this kind of counter bore right here, and then there's a chamfer going around it. So with the pallet jack, you just basically bring it over, you position it over these two pads, and then the taper falls into this counter bore, hits that chamfer, it positions itself absolutely perfect, and then you take the bolt right through the screw into the pad, and that locks it in place. And then basically right from that point, the robot is positioned perfectly. When you look on our website, titansofcnc.com, you'll actually see there's three different types of robots. And if you want more information beyond that, or you wanna get a quote, then just hit that quote button, boom, and uh, we'll get right back to you. So when Halter, when they came and set up the robot, they positioned this so it always moves the same way into the machine. So what the robot needs to do is it needs to grab a piece of material and bring it to the center of both of those chucks. So that's always going to be the same no matter what size of the material you have. The only difference is your jaw, you know, you're going to have to adjust your jaws and maybe your length of your part might matter a little bit, but it's always going to make the same kind of motion. So you can move this as much as you want and as long as it knows what machine it's running on, it's always going to move the same. And it's also really cool too. If you, if you actually look, it's super simple. So just like a horizontal mill, you know, and pallet systems, it's the same thing. You almost like this serves as almost like a pallet right here. That's one out there. It rotates when all of these pieces are done. It rotates 180, that door opens and you can place more parts over there. So this one right here is set up for five pieces per side, but see how these guys go? You can actually rotate you can rotate these, see that? And then this thing comes up. Yeah, Tice, go ahead and uh, show them how quick that comes off. So basically, you can take that guy out. Then you can grab this one. This one actually has 16 openings, so 16 parts on this side. So 32, it'd be 32 all together. But it's like a really cool system. It's really cool. And then you know, the machine has all these saved in there. So you just select which one you're running and they all- So each, each one, so the machine right here, you'd have a number mm -hmm. and this one's 23 to 85 millimeter. And then you can actually stagger them. So there'll be another one up here. So they're basically 
it just holds the material perfectly just like these so we'll go ahead and take this out we'll show you how to program it and then we will actually operate the robot and show you how easy this is for job shops boom all right now that the halter robot is in place travis down here he's hooking up three different things so you got the air hose you got the power cable and you have the data cable hooking those up and then we will be ready to turn on the robot and make this happen Tyson runs the 11-axis, now he's got the robot hooked up to it. He's milling, lathe, all that, and uh, dude. Why not add a robot to it? Killing it, <laughs> killing it. And he's the only one without haters. Like, this guy systematically does all these part tutorials and everybody loves it. Uh, crazy knowledge, but hey, that's just a, that's just a dad giving his son some love. <laughs> so, Tyce, now that we got the robot hooked up, can you actually just take them through and show them exactly how easy it is? take them through the process of programming the robot. It's actually really easy to program this thing. Well, I think both me and my dad were really surprised when we saw it. It's really just step by step. You're just answering questions and filling in, filling in the blanks here. So first thing it's gonna ask you is a program name. So I'm just gonna call it, uh, I'll just call it aluminum test. And then you move on to the next step, which is selecting what kind of material you're running, round, square, X, select round. We're gonna ask, it asks for your uh, raw workpiece dimensions. So this is the, the raw stock size and this is what the gripper is gonna be grabbing on side one. Just put in your raw workpiece size. So we got 6.3, 7.95 long. The next step after that, your machined workpiece. So your finished dimension. For this example, we're using a raw stock that we're just doing a chuck transfer and grabbing it off the second side. So it's the exact same dimensions as the first side. And then it's gonna ask you what kind of gripping type do you want for the raw stock? So OD gripping or ID gripping, and you can adjust the jaws on the gripper for either or. So we got OD gripping on both the raw and the machine side. And then here's where you make your program. So it's really easy. They give you a whole bunch of operations on the left, on this left column. And you're basically just telling it what order you want to do things. It's almost drag and drop. You just select which one you want and then add it to the second column there. So our program here, we have it. The first step is to grab the workpiece from the table. Then it's going to load chuck one, unload chuck two. And then after that, it's going to start the machine. So it gives it the go ahead to run the machine cycle. While it's doing that, it's going to grab the ready workpiece, the finished workpiece, and it's going to grab it from gripper side two and place it back on the table. If you need a different kind of cycle, you can actually customize all of these on the software. After that, it asks if you want to use the pressure sensor. We have it set up on the side one of the gripper. I turned it off for this example, so we don't need it. And then we have our gripping offset. It's asking for the rough piece and the finished piece. And this is the distance from the face of the gripper to the back end of the stock. You can see an example here on both sides. Again, we're gripping a raw piece of stock on both materials. These numbers are exactly the same on side one and side two. So it's gonna ask for a chuck offset. This is the distance from the bottom of the material to the face of the chuck. We have it 1.495 on both sides. And then it's gonna ask you for your jaw height. So from the face of the chuck, to the top of the jaws. One of the cool things about this, the machine moves the exact same way almost all the time. The only thing you're telling it is, you're telling it what size of material you're grabbing, and then you need to tell it how far along your jaws are, and then it's always gonna know where to put that material in. The last thing it asks is if you wanna use the air blow, which it'll actually, it has an air nozzle on there that'll clean off the jaws in a circular motion before it puts in the material. For this example, we're using a pretty big piece of stock, so it's not really practical to use it, and it'll be holding that big piece of stock the whole time when it's blowing off the jaws. But on Travis's machine, that would be something we would use because we're running smaller pieces of material. We can make sure that all the chips are off of those jaws before we clamp onto the piece. So it's a really cool feature that this has. After that, we're gonna make sure we load in our program. You have two sides here. One is the robot side, one is the operator side. We click on the operator side, select our test program here, select which grid plate we're using. So that's what we were talking about with the grid plates. You can pick which size you're running, how many max parts you can have on there, and then how many work pieces on a plate. I only have one piece of material for this example, but we'll set it to five there. 
And then when we start the robot, on the robot side, you can actually edit your programs here. So like if you need to make a quick little change to your program, something needs an adjustment, you can actually do that all on the robot side. You can make a quick edit, update the robot real quick, and it'll make any changes on the next piece. So we're ready to go. I'm gonna clear off all the errors that we have from starting it up. So like the emergency stops. There's a fence open error there. And that's actually this guy down here. That actually creates a fence, a virtual fence around the robot cell. So it actually creates a field. So if anyone steps into this, it clicks and alarms out and it instantly stops the robot. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually do a chuck transfer. So we're gonna actually take the material from chuck number one or spindle number one, put it in spindle number two, and then the robot will actually grab the material from over here and actually place it into the chuck and boom, let's go. Yeah. So to place it into the chuck and then it'll actually take out the other piece and pop it back on the table. Nice. Boom. Automation, baby. Woohoo! coming to you we're going to teach the entire process we're going to show you all different types of parts that you can actually automate whether it's mill or lathe show you how versatile the halter system is and how it's absolutely changing the game so stay tuned boom love you guys love this trade and uh, remember hit that subscribe button hit the like button put your comments down below if you got ideas on videos you want to see put it in the comments and you might just see it in a future video Boom, love you guys. Tice, great job. Boom. Halter is in the house.